Hi there, it's Jackie Martin with A Matter of Motivation and another edition of Pop-Up Positivity. I am so excited to have good friend Peter Carpenter here. You probably recognize Peter from, from the community. He is a um, just an absolute fixture and been such a benefit to so many companies and businesses. And as a leader, he owns Thoroughbred Designs. He is a graphic designer. And so you've seen, I'm sure, lots of his graphic designs and logos and things like that. He helped do the logo for, uh, for Be More, Be More, Be More Learning. Oh, just tons of stuff. Can't wait to talk to Peter. Hey, how are you, Peter? Tell us more. Everybody, tell everybody a little bit more about yourself. Okay. Doing great, Jackie. Thank you for having me. Um, excited to be here and, you know, share this time with you and pop up some positivity for uh, the people out there. Um, right now, I uh, am operating, you know, within the house, which uh, is great. It, uh, it's an easy thing for me to do. Love being here. Um, and then calling out to my clients and, you know, trying to make the, uh, the work thing work. Yeah. And um, having fun doing that. Well, so tell us a little bit about um, how you started your organization. And, and maybe even if you want to share a little bit about um, how long have you been in, in Forsyth County? Have you been here for a while? Tell us a little background. I moved to Forsyth County back in 2001. So going on 20 years. And I had started my company uh, a couple years previous to that. down I had the pleasure of uh, playing dad with my kids for a, a little bit and then through the course of time getting involved in the community um, just by like, nature of osmosis you know work started to come through and meeting the right people to uh, you know engage in you know what their needs might be for their marketing or their brand and um, have just done that year after year and really enjoy that. It's fun to reflect back on some of those early years, see who I've worked with, and then think about all the logos or all the, you know, businesses out there that, um, you know, hopefully have benefited from uh, my design help. Well, I, you know, and so having been a recipient of that design help, I always am curious, especially with a creative person like you, what is the process? I mean, when you, when somebody gives you a, okay, I need this thing. Is there anything that you, I mean, I know you design all kinds of different things, but is there any kind of process you go through to try to get it from a blank page to something spectacular? I try to keep the process as basic and simple as possible. Um, and that starts out with that conversation with the client, trying to extract out of them what their needs or desires are. If it's a logo design, if it is a advertisement, you know, it might be a, some sort of literature to promote their product of their company. I'm gathering information. That person, that uh, company has been, you know, invested in, many things to make their business run um, and you know they've been cycling around what they need but sometimes they just assume you know talking to me that I'm going to be at the same level of understanding that they are uh, and that's not the case so many times I you know will need to ask them about details of what they want in there what's the purpose or goal um, of the piece and um, you know, maybe there's supporting elements, um, other past printed pieces that help tell the story and that help expose what this is to me and where I can take it. No process is the same, um, but it, I just try to keep it started with that basic conversation with the client and see what their goals and needs are. Well, because I think sometimes people, especially those who maybe aren't as creative, obviously artistic and talented like that, can almost it can almost seem like magic. Like suddenly you get this vision and up it comes. But but how do you or do you ever get sort of like stuck, like writer's block only, creative block? And how do you get through that? I can't tell you how many times I've looked at the blank piece of paper, you know, one of those, and 
stared for minutes on end. And there's a variety of things that, you know, you learn through school, learn through experience, um, and just suggestions from other people in the industry of, you know, how to get over that hurdle. And it might be as simple as just physically getting up away from your desk, take a walk, go grab the mail, um, you know, maybe just walk down the block, get some sunshine, some fresh air, come back. And that change of scenery, that change of, or the transition from room to room, room to outside, whatever it is, uh, helps jog, you know, mm. some creativity. Other times I open some reference books, you know, different design manuals or manuals, um, that show what other people have done for maybe like projects. Go online. Um, I keep a, a collection of books and drawings and just, I'll call them artifacts. Uh, that I've collected over the course of years in boxes and in my closet. Sometimes it's just perusing through those. Um, and then I always tell people, resource your hobby. Um, it's amazing what people can tap into um, based off of uh, interest that may not even be related. Um, for example, I love music. And many times I'll go look at uh, record covers or CD covers or listen to music and that helps spur the creative uh, moment. You know what's interesting for those of you who don't know, uh, Peter actually has a whole wall that you've taken um, for or the little um, singles, right? Records and, and put on it. The, oh, and the, C the, oh, the CDs and all the covers and all that. Um, so I, I mean, I Obviously, that's so cool visually, too. Does that help to sort of stimulate things? There's been many times where I'll sit down on the couch and just stare at that wall and realize, you know, okay, when all these artists or designers were designing their albums, why did they decide to do what they did? And I find patterns. You know, a lot of people will put or use a, a, a specific color or maybe put just a large portrait of the artist um, as, as large and bold as it will go on the area given. Other people will, you know, completely go the opposite way. But it's fun to see what colors, what, what design decisions have been made over the course of my wall holds about 450. Um, CDs and a variety of albums. So you get a good span of, you know, different, different design thoughts to different inspirations. And um, it's also just fun to hang out and, you know, put one of those in the machine and let her rip, listen to it. Um, and, you know, I've been doing that a lot lately, of course, with the, uh, the current situation and, um, you know, it, it brings, it's my enjoyment so that, you know, you know, brings stress levels down for me. Um, and um, my hobby then influences what I do at work. I love that. I love bringing your hobby into your work. I think because you're already passionate about that. So what a, what a great idea. Um, so what you were just saying about music and how that kind of lowers your stress level and maybe sort of clears your mind or what, anything else you're doing or in this current time, obviously it's kind of stressful and trying to be creative during, you know, stress is kind of difficult. What thoughts or what are you saying to yourself? Do you, do you have anything that you either use to sort of inspire your thoughts at this time? No given mantra, <laughs> um, but I do try to maintain a positive spin on everything. Um, you may see something that's posted on social media that kind of has a negative twist to it. I'll just pass that by. If I'm frustrated with, you know, something that's going on in my life or um, something that may have just happened, you know, flat tire or something like that what's another thing that'll put my mind in the right frame? And, um, you know, it might have been something I enjoyed eating earlier that day. It might be knowing that I'm going to, you know, talk with a friend um, or, you know, 
maybe going to look at my music wall, you know, mm-hmm. just trying to maintain a positive uh, and good perspective to get past those little hurdles in life. And that's how I view them, little hurdles. Well, okay, so that's beautiful because that also puts in your mind it's doable, right? Correct. Being little. Um, but you're also a funny guy. So tell me how humor <laughs> plays a role. I'm sorry. Tell me how humor. Humor plays a role. Um, every day, yeah. If you can't laugh at yourself, if you can't smile at yourself, um, then, you know, go get yourself checked out because uh, putting a smile on both or, you know, in relieves or um, kind of soothes, you know, stress that I'm having, but seeing a smile on someone else or being able to share a smile, you may or may not know, but it, it can impact other people out there. And, um, you know, smiles usually mean bright eyes and, you know, things that are positive. Mm-hmm. So finding humor in things is great. Um, I often talk with my girls and I have two girls, uh, young twenties and, um, somehow it just naturally comes out of me, but I have qualified or could write a book on dad humor and they let me know every day. So, um, I own it, you know, I, every day I see myself like my father and that's a little man. And each time my kids say, you have some dad humor or, you know, oh, dad, that, that, stop it. You know, I just, I smile and think, okay, you know. Mission accomplished, um, right? <laughs> mission accomplished, happy moment. Yeah, that's awesome. And so, um, so we, just a little bit ago, you said something about when you were building your business, having been here almost 20 years, um, and you said, oh, little by little by osmosis that your business grew. I'm not sure that's entirely true. I think you've been super active in the community and, and making those connections. How has that played out? And maybe how do you see that going as we're in this circumstance right now? Um, definitely the, the clubs, the nonprofits, the different uh, groups that I've been involved with have influenced, um, you know, how my business has grown and the people that I meet. Um, I enjoy being out and about and meeting different people and seeing what they bring to the world. Young, old, millennial, you know, sports oriented, whatever, at the gym, a conversation, a smile brightens the day, um, I think, for both people. Mm-hmm. And so getting involved was just my way of, okay, I'm going to stay positive in my life. I'm going to do things that I think are important for the community, but also important for me. Mm-hmm. And in making myself feel good, feel better, that exudes or, you know, radiates out to other people. Nice. So, um, you know, I have the fortunes of uh, playing or not playing, but uh, being the mentor me chair. Uh, Congratulations, I heard about that. We are addressing or we are, you know, wrestling with what's going on now and how our programs um, function and how can we, you know, race and make things better for the kids. And so that learning process has been exciting. Then, you know, part of that I could, you know, apply to my life, my business, but knowing that I'm working with a team of likely like focused people mm. uh, for the benefit of others is very rewarding. Do you feel like too that, especially with a not getting involved with a nonprofit at the leadership level that you are, that it really gives us all perspective on what our own maybe problems might be compared to what some of the people that that organizations serve are going through. Are you noticing that even more now? It certainly helps. Mentioned before as being, you know, um, 
a very important part of my life was always involved in different groups and trying to help others and different entities be their best. Um, and, you know, part of me getting involved in doing this, I am emulating that. And he showed me what he did. I saw that as very positive and I want to do that. Um, it definitely, you know, good for the soul, good for other souls. And, um, um, just, I think the impact of being purposeful in the community beyond your business, beyond maybe the four walls that you live in uh, is important because it helps grow the community. And, and um, you know, whatever niche you are, I mean, there's so many groups out there, so many opportunities, um, you know, find that one that, you know, makes you smile and makes you want to go back and to the next meeting or the next uh, get together mm -hmm. and um, be positive about it. Well, I love the fact that you've, yeah, and you've used it a couple of times, I think at least as this whole feeding my soul. Um, and, and I think part of positivity does come from inside. I mean, that, that perspective, but also being around other people, like-minded people, or giving back in organizations can feed that soul. Is there anything else you do to help you stay positive? Find balance. Um, balance is big for me. If, you, if you're a close friend, you've heard me rant and rave about that before. But from friends to activities, to involvement, to business, to what you eat, um, you know, if you go to the extreme on one side, it's like a seesaw, uh, or I view it as a seesaw, you know, you're going to be stuck at the low point eventually. Um, so finding that balance, um, keeping, you know, life interesting. I mean, there should be roller coasters and there should be, uh, there, <laughs> let's put it this way. There will be roller coasters. There will be the hurdles. Um, so if you can, find that balance, find the ways to pull from the left and the right and um, make it positive for you. I, I think that's a good thing. And that that's where I, you know, find a resource of um, keeping me a little bit sane. Maybe there's a little bit creativity that comes from that because, you know, I'm getting involved in different experiences that uh, require different sides of my brain to think about, okay, how are we going to find that and create that balance? Mm -hmm. And um, that's all positive. That's nice. Um, before I ask my final question, I do have one other thing. You, you have talked several times uh, in our conversation just now about smiles and how smiles can be contagious. And it suddenly made me think, now that we're all, you know, a lot of people wearing masks, all we have is our eyes, right? Uh, have you thought about doing something? That, I mean, some people are doing fun things on their masks, but wouldn't it be fun to paint a smile? Uh, first off, it'd make people laugh, but how cool would that be? That would be always have idea. a smile. <laughs> I mean, I've seen lots of creative masks out there. I think people are, you know, in that line of thinking and trying to, you know, whether it's a name, whether it's a design, maybe it's a favorite sports team. Um, but it helps talk about their personality, helps them feel positive. So go for it. I, yeah. I love the idea. What type of, uh, what type of smile or what type of graphic would you put on your mask? Well, I, I have a flowered one, um, and we're about to do something cool using the Be More Learning logo, kind of putting it here. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, but I also thought it would be fun to have a smile. I mean, I just think I've seen some that look like the front of a motorcycle. You know, some of the face masks on motorcycles have teeth and stuff like that. But I thought, you know, if you put a smile, it doesn't even matter if it's a picture. It still makes people smile. Right. You almost can't help it, right? Exactly. It, hey, infectious. So. Exactly, exactly. So, so speaking of infectious, um, I mean, in a good way. Let's speak <laughs> yes. of infectious in a good way. Uh, 
So one of my girlfriends always <clears throat> says she, where I'm in a mastermind with her and there are times when we come up with ideas or maybe we're frustrated or we're in a challenge or an obstacle or maybe it's just like what's going on right now. And then she always asks to challenge us or me, um, what if it's better? What if it's better? And so I've been asking everybody that question, whatever it is that means to you, it could be about now, could be about whenever, but if you hear that, and maybe you say this to yourself, or maybe you don't necessarily, but I just love your take on the notion of what if it's better. I love that. I, that's the positive of trying different things. What if it's better? You're, you're making your life better. You're getting a better experience. Um, if you're trying something new at a restaurant or you know eating something and you enjoy it or it's better than what you cooked at home what's wrong with that that there's there's no negative there so um if it is better i'm all for that i i think that is a uh, a great positive spin to view things yeah. are there going to be moments where maybe it isn't better sure but then view those as the hurdles, get past it and think about that next thing that's going to bring you back up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I guess I, in some ways view it as we have a, it's sort of the cup half full or half empty in some ways we will have to search for that because there are circumstances that it isn't as easy to see. Yeah. Very true. Yes. So just being able to ask ourselves that question, even just to be able to answer it, you have to go there in a positive way. So that's kind of part of this whole thing. Well, Peter, how can people get a hold of you if they would like to seek out your creative talent? Ah, um, certainly welcome to email or call me. Um, I don't know if you want me to Well, share. what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put underneath your, um, right. underneath your uh, picture, we're gonna have your contact information. And so they could contact you for any creative services, uh, graphic. If, uh, you know, even if they just need the brainstorm, sometimes they, people have an idea, don't know how to perpetuate that. Um, and sit having a little brainstorm, getting a different perspective. Um, and there's no cost to that. It's like, let's throw things out the side of the barn and see what sticks. Love that. And by the way, just as an aside, I heard a gentleman today talking about the fact in uh, advertising right now, everybody needs to stop and look at all their advertising because once we go back, it isn't going to be the same. For instance, he was talking about somebody was watching uh, an old Kentucky Fried Chicken and every uh, commercial, everybody was licking their fingers, and then it showed people arm in arm and stuff. And this particular uh, video or um, you know, talk was talking about the fact we have to go back and sort of rethink or look at what we're currently doing advertising wise through, we have to look through a different lens because people sure. are looking differently. And so maybe that's going to be more uh, need uh, for your services. I certainly hope so. I uh, love advertising, whether it is print or, you know, video, um, you can see say a lot in a little bit of time and be so impactful. Um, so it's a, it's a fun medium to work with. Nice. Well, Peter, thank you so much. This has been a pleasure. I appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you for having me, Jackie, and uh, look forward to doing it. Glad I could help. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for being here too. This is Jackie Martin with A Matter of Motivation and another pop-up positivity in our video series. Please be sure to go to YouTube and subscribe. Uh, and that way you'll know all the other ones that come up e each time. We're putting out probably three a week. And so it also let us know if you would like to be or know someone who would be a great guest. We'd love to have you. Again, uh, Jackie Martin, thanks so much. Uh, appreciate Have a great day.